morning. I'm at Folsom Lake this morning again. Uh, I'm starting out at the Browns Ravine uh, launch ramp. I'm sure a lot of you guys could tell by the background with uh, the marina, the little store. But I figured I'd try and hit these docks first thing this morning with some top water, throw some Senkos, uh, Wacky Rig Senkos around. Uh, it is a little colder right now. The outside temperature was 41 degrees when I pulled up this morning here at this marina. Uh, the water temp on the surface is uh, about 60 degrees right now, right at 60 here at the marina. And you guys might know that this is the marina, but a lot of you guys may not know this marina has their own web page and it shows the current water temperature here at the marina the wind speed um, it shows the elevation of the water it's got a lot of uh, information it's got two live cams so I'm probably on camera right now because it shows the docks here and it actually shows uh, a picture going out towards the uh, the entrance of this of this little cove here in Browns Ravine. Um, but I'm letting my motor warm up a little bit because like I said, it is a little bit colder this morning. So I don't know if that's gonna affect the top water or not. I did get my first top water bite last week on a spook. So I wanted to come over here for obvious reasons. There's a ton of rock back this way on a couple of points. And I mean, I'm talking when the water's all the way up, you know, a 30 foot drop of just straight riprap. And you can see this cove is nothing but trees and, and little bushes and scattered rock. So having a just a huge riprap wall like that might hold some fish this morning. So I'm really excited to, to start my day to get some top water going. I've been trying these uh, docks at the marina. I am seeing a ton of carp all over the top water, all over the surface of the water they're hitting i don't know bugs food whatever junk debris who, who knows there's a huge a big rock wall right there that goes all the way around that's like a jetty right there and i'm gonna go up there and if it's any wa warmer you can see the water temp right now is only 55.3 i looked on that website this morning for the uh, folsom lake marina's website and they said the water temp was 60 degrees 60.1 degrees so that's why I came over here. I figured it would have been good for top water. And you can still see fish down there all over the place. But I believe they're, I believe they're carp. Um, but that's why I came over here is the marina's website said that the water temp was like 60.1. So it's about five degrees off. It might be too cold for top water. Oh, look at my graph. Look at all the, uh, could be trees. I can't tell. There's such a huge ball. It's probably trees. But right off of this point here, trees or bushes or something. Might be a good place to throw some, uh, throw a drop shot or a jig or something. Oh, see that? Or I heard that over there. I'm sure that was a carp. And I'm starting out with this Chapo 90 right here. Ooh, see, there was another one. I'm back to my wacky rig right now. Um, you can see the the tree limb sticking out of the water right there. I want to throw this sac this wacky rig senko around those tree limbs real quick before I move up a little bit. I've thrown everything around these trees in this little rock wall over here and i mean i've thrown a spook i've thrown a a chopo uh i've thrown a little shad wrap crankbait um i've thrown the wacky rig a ton i've been here for about a i don't know about a half an hour so far no bites on anything and then i start throwing this kitech easy shiner style uh, swim bait again and on my second cast I have the tail bitten off you know it's just I think it's just this time of year this body style they just they just want that body style right where I threw right there right where I casted is where I got the uh, the tail bit off 
going to try a uh, Texas rig brush hog. It's like the watermelon with red flake color and you can see why I want to get up in those trees right there and flip this stuff. at Peter Point right now just got myself a rock on my way out of Brown's Ravine my upper trim switch just died I don't know if you could see but a couple uh, bass boats flying around a lot of them have the uh, the custom wraps and stuff on their boat I'm sure they're all getting ready for that that Walmart mega cash I think is what it's called tournament coming up in uh, just a couple weeks at the end of May or mid-May I guess big one Looks like it's starting to be a pattern with trees. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there we go. Got one on a little crankbait. Little guy. But, uh, he's a fishy. I'm gonna throw you back. First one on a crankbait in a long time. Too bad he's uh, eight inches. And got another one on that little shad wrap. Small now. And I just missed one. Missed one right before this guy too. That's all right, bud. I'm gonna let you go, little guy. Boy, shovel hook got you all twisted up. There. I'm gonna throw it back to there. A little small mouth. Drop shot, but uh, I took my my hoodie off and forgot to put my dress hair back. There was like. It is really funny. There's, there's like two or three with this guy right here. So, that was cool. I guess I'll put my GoPro back on. Alright, what just happened is I took my hoodie off. Uh, it was getting a little warm out here. And I forgot to put my GoPro back on. And I seen a couple of fish on my graph. And so I threw back behind the boat and I video game fished it and I got them and I had noticed when I was bringing it in there was two other bass with the one that I caught. I tried to record it and uh, I heard my my camera start beeping on the floor. I forgot that I took it off. So that was kind of cool. Don't call me the professional amateur for nothing. We got another one 
Dude, I just saw this guy busting on the uh, surface through this little shad wrap over there again and picked him up. I thought it was a carp. It's nothing big, but you know, it's kind of cool. He was over there hitting the surface. And uh, I was like, huh? I'll cast over there real quick. Threw over there and got him. Ugh. Well, this is barely in there, but. Oh, oh dang. I got you a second time. Sorry, bud. Boy, a ton of just little babies today. Got another one, little guy. On that shad wrap again. What? Man, I changed spots again. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow, ow. Wow, that hurts. <laughs> Little dude got me. Thanks for biting, little man. Yep. Got to be careful with those little shad wraps. Little crankbaits, man. They will pop you. Woo! It's quick, though. This is only like my third cast at this spot. Just a, just a rock wall. And this water... This water is about 15 feet deep right here, and I can see the bottom. So this is super clear. I got him right out of that little cove there. Well, I think I'll be getting out of here pretty soon. All that looks like rain. And that's where I live is right that way, through the darkest stuff. Yeah. So I think that probably is going to end my day. You can actually see the rain coming down off of those clouds right there. Right there and right there. That I can't tell. I can't tell if that's just dark and far away or or what. But that right there is rain. That ends my day. Uh, looks like there are some really dark storm clouds coming in. Um, I can see some rain coming down from the clouds behind me already. I didn't think it was supposed to rain today. But, you know, you never can tell with the weather. I can actually see the rain coming down from some of the clouds out there. And it looks like it's headed our way, so I wanted to get in, especially with having a broken trim switch. Uh, I can't trim my motor up, so it was stuck in the down position all day. I ended the day, I caught seven. I caught four on a little shad wrap, two on a Kitek, and one on a drop shot. The water is so clear right now, it's about 15 feet of visibility with my Polaroid glasses on. And I think these bass are just, I think they're gone deeper because the water is so clear. Um, I, I tried shallow all day. Uh, I got a couple in trees. Um, I got two in trees and two different trees. One was a green, a live tree, and one was a dead tree. So, and they both were dinks. The rest came off of rocks, big bouldery type of rocks. Next week, I'm going to try basically... Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, top water first thing in the morning around some bigger rocks and then I'm going to go straight to um, fishing island tops and underwater rock piles stuff like that. I think they're pulling off a little bit deeper. I'm only catching little baby guys up shallow, just dinks up shallow. So I'd like to catch a keeper again and I think the, uh, the key to that is about 15 to 25 feet finding some uh, island tops, some rock piles, that sort of thing. So we'll give that a shot next week. We'll give that a try next week. And uh, thank you for watching.